home. What is your name? I told you. It doesn't name. matter what your name is. Yeah, <laughs> smile at everybody at home. You idiot. Bend over. <laughs> Get your monkey ass out of the rock. The Rock is no doubt one of the biggest stars in Hollywood currently, with his net worth being $320 million. Not only that, but he is still to this day one of the top WWE superstars of all time. If you made a list of the greatest wrestlers of all time, The Rock would 100% be on that list. He had an amazing career and will eventually one day go into the WWE Hall of Fame. However. There is still that one little stint that The Rock had that never sat right with me. One thing that still taints The Rock's career to me. Today, we're going to look back at one of the biggest blemishes in The Rock's career and what went wrong. At WrestleMania 20, Mick Foley brought in The Rock to reunite The Rock and Sock connection and help him conquer the group known as Evolution. A team of Randy Orton, Ric Flair, and Batista represented Evolution. And they went on to defeat The Rock and Mick Foley at WrestleMania when Randy Orton pinned Foley after hitting the RKO. Many believe that this was The Rock's final match ever in the WWE. He would never wrestle again. The Rock didn't need to wrestle again. At this point, he was already making waves in the world of acting. He would eventually become one of the biggest box off sensations of all time. He didn't need to wrestle. Years later, The Rock would come back for a few one-off appearances but we all assume that The Rock was done wrestling. He would induct his father, Rocky Maivia, and his grandfather, High Chief Peter Maivia, into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2008. And on February 14, 2011, The Rock made his live return to a place he called home, the WWE. The Rock then went right after John Cena, making that night even more memorable. Cena made comments towards The Rock in 2008 interview with The Sun, he took several shots at The Rock. Don't fuck me around and tell me that you love this when you're just doing this to do something else. That's the only thing that really gets me pissed off. The Rock would respond to John Cena and said that he would be seeing him at WrestleMania. The Rock was the host of WrestleMania 27 and would make his presence felt on the grandest stage of them all. After weeks of Cena and The Rock trading insults back and forth in which The Rock used pre-recorded segments to get his message across, he finally made another live appearance on Raw. During this appearance, he called out John Cena, only for him to be interrupted by the WWE Champion, The Miz and Alex Riley. While John Cena was on the outside of the ring, The Rock was attacked by The Miz and Riley. When The Rock took control, The Miz headed for higher ground while Riley received a rock bottom for his trouble. However, John Cena snuck up on The Rock and performed his finisher, the Attitude Adjustment. We knew that more would go down at WrestleMania. At WrestleMania 27, The Rock opened the show. Finally, The Rock has come back to Atlanta! The Rock came out to the ring at the end of the show just as Cena and The Miz were involved in a double count out draw. However, The Rock decided to restart the match with no count outs and no disqualifications. From then, The Rock responded to Cena's actions the week before, sneaking up behind him and planting him with a rock bottom, helping The Miz earn a pinfall. The Miz, well, he also received a rock bottom for his troubles at the end as the show closed. The night after WrestleMania in Atlanta, John Cena called out The Rock. The Rock responded to Cena about his actions at WrestleMania. What'd you think was going to happen? You poke a shark in the eye, you're going to get swallowed whole. The Rock respects you, but it doesn't change the fact that flat out that The Rock just doesn't like you. Cena responded, hear it, feel it, see it. The people are standing in the ceiling, not because they want us to talk, because they want a match. Not just a match, these people know what match. A match where generations collide. The match where they want is John Cena 
versus The Rock. It's obviously what we should do. So what do you think? Do you want to bring it? The Rock answered, John Cena, you have no idea what you just asked for. You asked The Rock to bring it, you bet your candy ass The Rock will bring it. We'll make history. We'll do something that's never been done before. And the match was set. WrestleMania 28, John Cena versus The Rock. At Survivor Series, John Cena and The Rock would team up and defeat The Miz and R-Truth, the match that was building for WrestleMania. So the match happened, The Rock won with The Rock Bottom, and WrestleMania was the highest wrestling pay-per-view of all time. History was made. They took one year to build a match at WrestleMania, and it paid off. Good for them. That's not where the story ends, though. On July 23rd, at Raw 1000, The Rock announced that he would wrestle for the WWE Championship at the Royal Rumble pay-per-view. During the show, he encountered the then reigning WWE Champion CM Punk, Daniel Bryan, and John Cena, all of whom wanted to face The Rock at the Royal Rumble. The Rock later saved Cena from an assault by The Big Show, but only got laid out by CM Punk. On January 7, 2013, on Monday Night Raw, The Rock returned to confront his Royal Rumble opponent, CM Punk. This promo was absolutely terrible for The Rock, and CM Punk completely destroyed The Rock in this battle. The Rock went out here as a squeaky clean face. He pandered to the crowd and used cute catchphrases to try and make fun of CM Punk. The Rock was loud and animated, and CM Punk, on the other hand, he was calm and calculated. CM Punk said The Rock's insults and jabs were only kitty games, and those jabs don't hurt the champ. He capped it off by saying maybe one of the greatest lines ever said on the microphone. Understand, when you step in the ring, your arms are just too short to box with God. CM Punk just exposed The Rock here. The Rock just set up the baseball on the tee, and CM Punk hit a complete grand slam. At the time, CM Punk was very cold and calculated in everything that he did. He told his version of the truth and how he felt about the WWE and the mismanagement of superstars. Even the fans that disliked CM Punk at the time could see that he was pretty spot on with everything that he was saying. This single promo between the two destroyed The Rock and it was hard for him to come back. We know how the story plays out. They had the match at the Royal Rumble. CM Punk won after interference from The Shield, and then Vince McMahon restarted the match where The Rock would win the WWE Championship. They would have a rematch the next month at Elimination Chamber, and The Rock would retain the WWE Championship. The Rock then goes on to lose the title to John Cena at WrestleMania 29. The Rock was supposed to be at the Raw after WrestleMania, but because of his injury sustained during his match with Cena, he did not appear. The Rock has done a few minor appearances for the WWE since then, but has announced that he has retired from wrestling in 2019. He had this to say on Live with Kelly and Ryan. I miss wrestling. I love wrestling. I quietly retired from wrestling because I was lucky enough to have just a really wonderful career and accomplish what I wanted to accomplish. He will probably still always come back to the WWE, but I'm not sure we'll get any big matches besides maybe a one-off program with Roman Reigns. So The Rock came back to have a year-long build to a match with John Cena at WrestleMania 28. The buy rate was crazy and it proved that the long-term booking worked. When next year's WrestleMania came around, WWE wanted to put the championship on The Rock going into WrestleMania to get another big buy rate. There were some major issues with this. For one, CM Punk was holding the WWE Championship for 434 days, wrestling his ass off and carrying the entire company. CM Punk had never gotten his WrestleMania main event match. If there was any time to give it to him, it was WrestleMania 29. CM Punk was the most authentic thing that WWE had at the time, and The Rock coming in and taking the title from him felt wrong. The Rock is awesome, but he felt like a corporate puppet there to sing and dance and do his catchphrases and earn a big paycheck. CM Punk was the guy in the trenches, putting on the matches and helped keeping the company going while The Rock wasn't. CM Punk even understood that The Rock had a crazy schedule filming movies, and doing that is no joke. The Rock was an amazing hard worker, 
but his arms were just too short to box with God. The Rock was exposed during the promo battle with CM Punk, and looking back, The Rock was only a transitional champion to get to a WrestleMania match with John Cena and make a bunch of money for the WWE. The Rock came in and did a montage of his best hits and went back to Hollywood. The Rock ended up sustaining a major injury that could have affected his long-term acting career, so any more long-term storylines with The Rock had to be done forever.